Just 70 miles northwest of Detroit and right off of I-75 North sits Flint, Michigan, a once prosperous and populated township thanks to General Motors and other factory jobs. But now it's a place where blight and decay infect nearly every block and where people who live here have given it a different name, the Murder Mitten. It's the murder, the murder mitten. Yeah, they call it the murder yeah, mitten. Murder mitten. Yeah, yeah. Mitten can shape like a mitten. Man, they kill your ass in a minute. Up it's just so smart. You don't want yeah, if, yeah. if I get into you with you today and I leave, I'm gonna run into you at the mall. I'm gonna yeah. see you at Steak mm -hmm. and Shake. I'm gonna uh, see you yeah. at the hospital. Uh, I'm gonna see somewhere. you somewhere. Yeah. And if I feel like I, I'm, I'm yeah. mad at you that much, I don't care where it's at. It's gonna go down. It's gonna go down. We all got to pray and pray on the same thing, and it's for us to return back to what it used to be. Well, it, well, it won't ever get back to what it used to be, but we could get very close. Flint used to be a wealthy industrial city that brought train cars full of workers from all over the country. But now those jobs are gone, the train tracks are broken and abandoned. And the sign that welcomed thousands now looks like this. And when those jobs moved out, violence, crimes, and guns moved in. This is the number one challenge facing the city. Everybody has been trying to uh, tackle this serious challenge and it's fueled by illegal firearms and guns and gangs and drugs and the deadly combination that all that combines. My friend got shot in front of me on my porch. You ever see, you see that happen, you be like, like, oh shit, it's a body in front of me. It's bleeding. You don't know what to do, but call the ambulance. According to the 2013 population estimate from the U.S. Census, the city's population has dropped below 100,000 for the first time since the 1920s. And 40% of the people still here live below the poverty line. It's like an abandoned city, but people sit on almost every porch. And it's highly likely they've been affected by the gun violence. Yeah, I done, I done lost a few people. I just got shot. Around the same June 5th of last year, like right here, like right here. You, feel me? you did right something here. wrong to me. Now I gotta get you back. I don't care who you're in front of, where you at. That's just the mentality here, you know what I mean? It is what it is. I used to be a monster, mm. but now I'm a better person. They bought the gun. Remind you, this is New Year's, and they run around the house fucking playing with the guns and shit, like, I got you, I got you, I got you, mm -hmm. I got you. And then my nephew fucked around and said, I got you, and he pulled the goddamn trigger. Shot dude, killed dude, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Parents rarely let their children outdoors. Even in these summer months, seeing kids outside is a rarity. So inside of the Foss Avenue Baptist Church is the outreach group Brothers Battling Bloodshed. Isaiah Canada is a new member, pressured to come to the group a few times a month by a friend because he didn't feel that Isaiah was safe on the streets. If you get robbed at Flint, you got a 50% chance to get killed. Because you don't got nothing in your pockets. You just wasted my time, my life. So I gotta shoot you. If I don't shoot you, I'm gonna put you in critical condition. Mm -hmm. Have you shot someone before? See you, man. I have, but not, just not, I don't talk about it. It's personal, but I've been through the trouble and I did what I did. Feel me? I can't I can't stop. I can't go back in time and stop what I did, but I was young and dumb. I don't want that to be on my conscience. I'd rather go to school and get money than going to rob somebody for their money, for their all hard working money. Why well, I can't go get my own hard working money? Why well, I gotta rob you for it? But when you hang with a positive clique or a positive crew, as I say, you you gonna be positive. You gonna do something in life. If you got somebody that edge you on to go to college and do something. That's the right person to chill with. Roderick Green is a group's director, and he knows how important it is for youth to be in outreach groups like this. A lot of uh, the young men that they know and I know have been put in jail and, and killed. One of the things that we tried to do was be here enough for them to keep their minds off of anything negative. And our vision is to be a voice for Christ in the community by putting into action a holistic approach to ministry that rebuilds and transforms lives spiritually, economically, politically, and physically. How easy is it for someone to get a gun in this city? Just like that. Flint's gun homicide rate has increased over the past few years. In 2012, there were 64 homicides in the city, 
and nearly 90% of those were firearm related. And according to FBI data, Flint had the highest murder rate of any U.S. city with a population of 100,000 or more. This is the same long-term trend that we've been dealing with for 30 years. And it's the correlation between impoverishment and, and race. Uh, it's something that we have to address in our community. Flint gonna be dead by then, man. People is packing up and leaving. Too many kids is dying. If you go around the hood, ride around here, I promise you might see less than 14 or 15 year old kids my age with guns. The guns come from everywhere. The neighbor across the street, a burglarized home, or funneled from nicer suburbs like Grand Blanc. You've got to find the, 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 the source of the guns. Uh, many agencies, uh, uh, alcohol, tobacco, firearm, and explosives, we have, a, we have task force officers that work with them, and that's their job. They go after the gun dealers, the illegal gun sales, the straw purchasers of guns, where, and those are individuals we have to target because they're putting a lot of guns out on the street. But police stations have been vacated and abandoned throughout the city. Flint employs one officer for every 830 people. Now compare that to New York City, which has about 235 civilians per officer. In four days in Flint, we saw just one police car patrolling the streets. If you talk to any police chief, they would ask for more people than they have, obviously, simply because with the greater, the greater multiplier, or force multiplier of people, uh, you can do more. You can be more proactive. You can handle calls for service and do proactive work. Roderick Green says he and brothers battling bloodshed are the protection for young people in Flint and Michigan's murder mitten.